Welcome to this section of tutorials on synthetic aperture radar that is SAR image classification using SNAP. Shown here is the allos pulsar data towards your left side and the colorful image you see is the RGB image which has been subjected to radiometric and geometric calibration which has been subjected to speckle filtering and multi looking. These terminologies I believe are not new to you by now because we have already covered each of these in detail in the previous tutorials. So, in tutorial 2 we have seen first how to access the allos pulsar imagery. We discussed how to download the specific data for Mumbai region followed by how to open the imagery in Python and different methods by means of which we could carry out speckle filtering. Also uh, over the previous tutorials to be specific tutorial 2 we got familiarized with the snap toolbox and also to carry out radiometric and geometric calibration of synthetic aperture radar imagery. So, with this background let us try to understand how to classify a synthetic aperture radar image. So, moving further for this particular tutorial we will be using the allos pulsar data which was previously downloaded for tutorial 2. As before the SAR data formats and the processing levels are being displayed here. Okay. So, before we can start with image classification we have to do pre-processing of the image. So, let us try to refresh our memory in snap. Let us first try to open the product using the open product button that is available. So, that the image is displayed in the product explorer as you see there are a number of bands. Let us see how the intensity image looks like okay? because double clicking on any of the bands will enable one to view the raster data. The world view helps us to see over which region the, the image that is being shown here is over which region. So, we had downloaded it for Mumbai region that is why you see a square box there. And this is how the intensity image is going to look like. Now, um, this image appears to be stretched in one direction is not it because it has not been subjected to multi looking. Okay. So, now um, also in this image you can observe that there is a lot of speckle, okay, lot of noise. That is why I mentioned that after you download an image you have to understand how to do the pre-processing before we can even begin with image classification. So, right now what we did is in the product explorer we opened the image and we understood that it contains a metadata, vector data, tie point grids and bands. Out of these bands we tried how to um, double click on intensity underscore hh and to display the image here that is what we have commenced. Now, let us try how to calibrate the data. So, as we have already seen to properly work with a synthetic aperture radar data the same has to be first calibrated. And by calibration to be specific by radiometric calibration we are trying to convert the backscatter intensity as it is received by the sensor to the normalized radar cross section or sigma naught imagery. 
We tried to compute the sigma naught imagery in Python in one of the previous tutorials. So, I may not go into details now. To summarize radiometric calibration we are performing to take into account the global incidence angle of the image. So, uh, this correction is specific to the mission ok and to perform this we have to go to radar radiometric and then this window opens up for calibration. You can see the bands are displayed here I am going to select 4 bands ok and the target product automatically underscore cal is going to be added to the output image. Source file is the imported product and target file will be the new file and we get to select the directory in which the target product shall be saved. We can open double click on the imagery. So, we can see that there are two images available sigma naught images HH and sigma naught VV and this is how the image looks like ok. Now that we have completed calibration, let us move on to the next step that is multi looking. As I mentioned earlier, the image that you see in front of you it appears stretched in one direction. So, in the step of multi looking we are trying to generate multiple looks by averaging over the range and or, or azimuth resolution cells. So, this improves the radiometric resolution and then it gives us an image which will have lesser noise and which will have approximately square pixels because you are doing the conversion from the slant range to the ground range. Throughout the lectures I hope that now you are familiar with these terminologies that is slant range and ground range. So, to perform multi looking we can directly select the image highlight the image on which we want to perform multi looking. We go to radar, SAR utilities and then there is an option of multi looking which we click. As before underscore ML is going to be added by default ok. I can run it takes hardly 1 second to display the output ok. Sigma naught image and sigma naught HH image and HV image. So, this is how the multi looped synthetic aperture radar image looks like you can see a huge difference is not it. Because first when we started the exercise I showed you the image and now after multi looking you can see that it has approximately square pixels it does not appear stretched in one direction. But of course, it has the salt and pepper noise that is speckle effect is prominent in this image. So, as the next step what we try to do is let us try to subset an image ok. So, this is just a small step uh, to show you that when you are working with large images many a times uh, when you are trying to do classification the, the program runs for a lengthier time a longer time. So, to avoid that you can subset and work on a smaller image so that the process is completed quickly. So, if you want to subset an image you can directly click on it, go to image viewer, zoom the area for subsetting ok. So, let me select a smaller section of the image ok. The subset area is shown towards the left and as soon as I click a subset image is generated which is having 2 bands. Okay. Now, let us try to understand how speckle filtering can be carried out in SNAP. What you see displayed here is the subset of the image that was shown 
And as discussed in previous lectures, speckle is caused by random as well as destructive interference. So, we have random constructive and destructive interference that results in these grainy dots or salt and pepper noise that is predominantly seen in synthetic aperture radar images. And to reduce this effect, we use speckle filters. Now, the choice of which filter is best for what application um, that is dependent on many factors. Now, for this particular tutorial, just to um, cite an example, I am going to use the Lee filter. Okay. So, as before, I can go to radar, I can highlight the image that needs to be subjected to speckle filtering and then I can go to radar, speckle filtering, single product speckle filter and yes. As mentioned earlier, I have selected leaf filter just to show as an example. We find this is how the image looks after it is being subjected to speckle filtering. Okay. The next step is known as de-skewing or it is part of terrain correction. So, uh, the data needs to be de-skewed to transfer it into a zero Doppler like geometry before we begin with any standard synthetic aperture radar processing. And this particular step is just for the LOS1 sensor. Within SNAP, it allows us to do LOS de-skewing. Always highlight the image in the product explorer on which you want the operations to happen. Okay. Radar geometric allows de-skewing. The digital elevation model can be selected. I have kept it as SRTM 3 second. Okay. So, the next step is terrain correction. So, this is performed to geocode the image by correcting the geometric distortion using a synthetic elevation model. Okay. The map projection, I am going to change it to WGS84. So, in previous tutorials, we have already seen what is foreshortening, layover and shadow effects, etc. This particular step that is terrain correction is performed to geocode the image by correcting SAR geometric distortions using a digital elevation model and what you see in front of you is the output imagery after it has been subjected to terrain correction. You may have noticed that in this particular step, we have unchecked the mask out areas without elevation option. We do this, uh, otherwise it will remove the zero elevation pixels. Okay. And here the digital elevation model is going to be automatically downloaded. So, please ensure internet is running during this time. Okay. Say I want to create an RGB image channel, I can right click and then create a band ratio. Okay. There are different options that are available, different tools that are available for us to manipulate the images. Okay. I can use band math with individual bands of the imagery. For now, let me try to select the imagery and then go to edit expression of band math. 
say I want to create a third band that is nothing but the ratio of first and second bands. I can write the expression here. So, the data sources that is images present in the highlighted file is going to appear towards the left side. I can type the expression here. So, I want the third image to be sigma naught hv by sigma naught hh. The name is new band 1. Okay. So, you see now that the third band has been added which is nothing but ratio of existing bands. Now that we have 3 bands, I can use the RGB window to create an RGB image. So, as before I can select on the product, I can right click on it and then RGB image window option opens up. I can select the image channels for me to get a colorful image like this. Okay. Visually, um, this image gives me more details than the image that I started to work with. So, if you remember initially we started to work with a black and white image which is stretched in one direction which has lots of noise. We performed the pre-processing steps one by one. And then finally, we have generated the third band to display the RGB image. You can see the mountainous regions, the mangroves, water body, urban area, vegetation all are displayed in different colors. So, visually it helps me to identify the features or classes in a better manner here. Okay. Now, let us try to understand about classification. So, image classification is a topic which has been covered in the lectures. So, here we will try to have a practical hands on session wherein you understand how to perform unsupervised classification and supervised classification using the image that we have seen just now. Okay. Now, um, when I talk about unsupervised classification, we are trying to work with clusters. So, it is nothing but cluster analysis that classifies objects into different groups so that the data in each subset shares some common traits. Now, a data clustering as such is used in many fields like machine learning and pattern recognition, image processing, bioinformatics, etc. The SNAP toolbox by default offers two algorithms to perform unsupervised classification. First is the k-means clustering and second is EM cluster analysis or expectation maximization EM cluster analysis. So, what we will try to do is till now we started with the LOS Pulsar data and we completed all the pre-processing steps and we are standing at after creating the RGB image. Now, let us use the same image RGB image to perform unsupervised classification. For example, I will take the EM cluster analysis one of the two algorithms that are present by default in the SNAP toolbox. So, uh, in EM analysis, each pixel is assigned a membership to a cluster defined as a probability. And for each pixel, there are k probability values where k denotes the number of clusters. Let us first see how to achieve this in SNAP. So, I have the RGB image displayed. I can go to raster options and then to classification, unsupervised classification out of the two options I am going to go with EM cluster analysis as before processing parameters the number of clusters you know uh, for now I am going to keep it as 5 so that I get the output quickly. It 
takes less than 1 minute to run and then display the results. So, the topic of image classification and the different algorithms what goes inside when you click on a particular button all those details we have covered in the lecture. So, in this particular tutorial I am not going to repeat those. Just be aware that you can perform the same operations using python as well as now whatever we are trying to do using snap. Okay. And if as mentioned before whenever we are trying to use a particular uh, inbuilt function in snap as the target product that is the output product it automatically assigns a alphabet so that it is easy for us to identify. Okay. For example, under M underscore ML is und after multi looking ML and SPK is speckle, TC is terrain correction and so on. Okay. And remember, um, we can also use sentinel imagery in snap that this example is pertaining to the allows pulsar data sets, but you can also use sentinel imagery and there we have our output now. It has just one band of class indices. So, instead of digital number or sigma naught values, I have class indices. So, one color is assigned to one class. Say I am not happy with the colors and say I want to change the colors. I can go to tool windows and color manipulation wherein I can click and change the color so that the features are highlighted to my satisfaction. Okay. All right. So, the optimum number of clusters are important when we deal with unsupervised classification and there are algorithms that help you to give an answer on what is the optimum number of clusters pertaining to unsupervised classification. Right now to show in this hands on exercise I have just kept it as 5. Okay. All right. So, now that we know how to create a classified map using one of the unsupervised classification algorithms, as the next part of this tutorial we shall be trying to work with supervised classification algorithm. I will see you in the next section of this tutorial. Thank you.